What's up YouTube? It's your boy Steve from Printer Gang Investments back with another video. So the market just closed today, man. Nvidia, we got to give Nvidia their props today everybody. You know, I have a decent little Nvidia position. I don't got no options on it. I don't trade it. I just roll it so I don't talk about it that much. But Nvidia broke out today and hit 143 and change. So you know what I'm saying? Get them round of applause on that. You feel me? Blackwell chips, man, they must be handling those issues with them Blackwell chips. And most importantly, that's good and bullish for all our AI stocks, man. You know, NVIDIA, you know, basically leads our whole little movement right now, you know what I'm saying? And then we had the Taiwan Semi earnings come in good after the market was scared by the ASML earnings. Then we got NVIDIA riding. Palantir was flat today, but that's cool because we got earnings November 7th, like, I mean, we could do whatever till November 7th. I don't really care. It's all about November 7th for us. But I was just checking the market sentiment. The market was actually strangely flat today. Most of the stocks were kind of flat today. NVIDIA broke out, and that small cap rally continues, y'all. Small cap rally real. Rocket Lab did some more money. SoFi went up some more, and I am so uh. Look like that thing taking off without me. The Ion Q did another 10 point, what, almost 11% today. It's almost at 15, man. It was at like 9, 10. We was first trying to get into it. And look at it. And that was already up 50%. So I don't know if I'm going to get that pulled back or not. That might be gone on me. But what I'm here to talk about right now is this continuing AI story. Because, all right, we see what NVIDIA is doing on the chip side. We see the supply chain of the chip side. We see the whole hardware chip build out game. Then we see Palantir. We see Palantir with the infrastructure play, with the with the business enterprise play. So I get that. I get how AI is gonna be getting used there. But on the Apple side, they were the ones who were supposed to be bringing AI to the consumer. I'm trying to see, as my boy Future says, is they really like that? Is they really like that is the question, you feel me? But I was just listening to one um, analyst talking about Apple Intelligence and how he's overweight Apple Intelligence. And it kind of sucks for your boy because I actually got an Apple call. It's worth like eight, nine hundred dollars. I started with one hundred sixty seven dollars. It went to sixteen hundred. I sold six hundred dollars worth, put a thousand back in. And they just been built the ass like really giving me problems ever since. And I got this little punk ass iPhone 16, but they swear this thing gonna cause an upgrade cycle. I don't know. I'm holding my car down because it's Apple and I don't want to doubt them, but come to think of it, I probably should have sold the Apple call and bought some NVIDIA at the time, but I don't know why I didn't think that. I'm so used to avoiding stocks where the cars are too expensive and just buying the shares. But let's look at this real quick. Listen to this man talking crazy. You know, we get so many different reads from so many different analysts and different data sources. What are you seeing in the data that gives you uh, some comfort? Yeah, no, sure. Uh, so what we've seen more recently, and you talked about it, the initial weeks did show weak momentum in terms of iPhone orders just starting out of the gate. What we've seen is a recovery since then, and really they are rational in terms of probably what's driving that is when we look at consumers who upgrade into like an iPhone 15, the biggest cohort seem, always appears to be the iPhone 14 user. So one year habitual user sort of upgrader tends to be a big cohort that drives that initial order momentum. And really what happened is you didn't really get that momentum initially this year, primarily because Apple intelligence was a bit delayed. So the very tech savvy consumer who's upgrading every year decided, okay, there's no rush really to order. And what we've now steadily seen since then is the order momentum's picked up and now lead times are practically in line with iPhone 15. If you consider that supply this year is actually a bit better and easier for Apple uh, overall with the supply chain being a lot more normalized, what you're seeing is probably high single digit higher demand year over year on the iPhone 16 versus the 15. So does it confirm the view of some who believe that if there will be a surge in demand when Apple intelligence is available? And are you amongst that group? Yeah, no, definitely. So what we're also hearing from the supply chain is Apple itself is quite positive, as well as I think overall consumers are also waiting to see more of those Apple intelligence features as well. Uh, particularly, as you can imagine, a lot of consumers still go into the store 
experience the device hands on and then opt to buy the device so there's going to be you know, man we will see we will see man that's what they say and that's what they saying they say we everybody's gonna buy iPhone 16 when the Apple intelligence features hit now personally I'm a little more skeptical I bought the iPhone 16 I had the iPhone 14 um I don't I don't see it you know what I'm saying but the, you know Apple intelligence ain't out yet Apple intelligence ain't out yet I'm gonna give them a chance I know I only bought my iPhone because they let me upgrade for free every two years but we shall see it's very critical to the rest of the AI trade because one thing I just haven't really seen since we started this whole AI wave like I understand how we can make a lot of money on the AI side on the business side that's why we on Palantir the infrastructure side the build outside I understand that but I'm still waiting to see what's gonna be the killer app for the regular person like chat GPT is cool but I see chat GPT more effective for enterprise than regular people yeah there are regular people who use it but not that much so I just want to see what Apple's gonna do because you know that kind of gives us more what's the word I'm looking for that gives us more clarity to the AI story so it's like like why are people buying all these NVIDIA chips? Why is the black whale the biggest thing? Why is everybody trying to compete with them? You know what I'm saying? What can be done with this AI besides just what Palantir got going on? You know what I'm saying? But, you know, that's just my quick thoughts for the day. You know what I'm saying? Market flat. NVIDIA up. Palantir flat. Magnificent 7 flat. It was kind of just NVIDIA's day to everybody who got more NVIDIA shares than me. Got NVIDIA call options. I salute you. I'm very happy with my NVIDIA this shares. This morning with funds. I'm very happy with my NVIDIA shares. I wish I had more. You know what I'm saying? But this is your boy Steve from Printer Gang Investments. I'm out. I'm going to be back with another video.